I, I'm going to take a sketchbook out into the street in Vietnam, in Hoi An in Vietnam and make a, uh, a, a quick sketch of the scene that we see in front of us. I, I, obviously, uh, it, it, that's, I'm not doing that because this is a photograph I'm working from, but as much as I can, I'll try and get my head around that and talk you through, um, talk you through that. And then I will do what I've done for all the other paintings uh, and do a, a painting on uh, a larger sheet of paper and do, and uh, do that in steps, breaking them up and allowing you to paint along. The first one, the sketchbook one, I'm, I'm going to go through that um, at a slow speed, but but without pauses. So I, you, you just watch that. I'm, I'm hoping that will take 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and, and if anybody wants to follow along with that, that is just fine. Uh, uh, if somebody wants to do both of them, that's just fine. Uh, or if you just want to see out of interest how it goes working in a sketchbook, uh, that is just fine. With the sketchbook, so let, let me turn my attention now to the sketchbook. Um, in, uh, and all the time, I'm going to try and explain, uh, give you tips for simplifying things. I'm going to take this out of the way just for the moment and bring bring a sketchbook out a sketchbook here and talk briefly about the materials that I'm going to use and go ahead and make this painting uh, right materials sketchbook so the paper it's um, it, it, I think this is a half cotton content um, paper so it's not as good as a the paper I'm using for my um, larger picture, but it, it's still pretty good. Uh, it, it is reasonably absorbent. Uh, and uh, for the drawing, I'm going to, I, I'm going to draw with a pen. I, I had originally intended this to be a pencil. And in fact, when I did that little film, practice film I did was with a pencil, but um, I noticed that Bill has mentioned it's going to be pen and wash. And so I'm happy to go along with that. I'll, I'll use this um, permanent pen here uh, in just a moment to make the drawing. And as far as the painting's concerned, I've got a little setup here, which I take everywhere with me. It's called a field kit. Uh, it opens up. Many of you will have seen this or things like this before. It opens up like that. And it's got the water in it. In fact, let's, let's put that in now once I'm here. Put a bit of water in. And it's what I take out with me everywhere. Uh, pop that on here. And I've got, and we'll see it all right. Uh, I've, so it's got some mixing palettes here. It's got, is it uh, 10, 11 colors, which uh, I'll talk about in, in a moment. And it's got two brushes. So I put the biggest brush that I could find in here and I've cut down the handle, got rid of that. So it, it slots in there. And I've got the smallest brush. In fact, when you buy this particular set, it gives you some little um, piddly little brush. So I've, I've cut down the rigger and I put that in there. So I've got, in a sense, a rigger and a wash brush, which I'm going to use with this. So we're doing that with ink, rigger and wash. Uh, now, a couple of things before we get going about simplification. Um, once you go out on plein air, the whole thing becomes uh, quite confusing. Uh, all sorts of uh, distractions um, are there, not, not just the visual distractions of everything that's going around you, uh, but the distraction of trying to find somewhere where you're going to work, the distraction of the heat, the rain, the flies, the no whatever it is, uh, and of course, the biggest distraction is that quite often, depending on what you're drawing, things are moving. So in a marketplace like this, everything's moving on. There are some things that aren't moving, and I'll explain that in just a moment. But generally, things are moving around. The excitement and the movement and, and what's going on uh, is flashing in front of your eyes. Uh, and there are a number of things you can do about that. You can just, well, first of all, the things that aren't moving in this case, the, the stalls and the umbrella and the, the, the roofs and, and that sort of thing, th those are there 
that's just fine. So you've got some point of reference to help you here. But of course, the, the people are moving here. And uh, and if if it is the people that they're wanting, well, you can have a go at, at drawing them. And you may be successful with that. But what, 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 what I find I do quite often now is that I just go ahead and draw and paint. But at some stage, I... I take a photograph. Sometimes I'll take a number of photographs and then I might come back to those photographs and just to help me work out something to do, say, with the people. That, 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 that's not what I did here because I haven't done a painting of this before. I didn't do a painting at Hoi An. This is just a photograph I took. If I could explain that in a, in a different way, here is a sketchbook that I had in Hoi An in Vietnam. And this, this picture, uh, these are a, a number of pages from when I was in Hoi An. So this particular view I painted sitting on the, a wall somewhere. And what I was particularly interested in was all of this colorful background, the building, the doors, the decorations, uh, and uh, the, the vibrancy of that. But I wanted to put a figure, and there were there were people walking backwards and forwards all the time here. Uh, and I, if I remember right, I probably every now and then took some photographs, and there was one particular photograph I liked. So, with my camera screen in one hand, and I, I, I just put the figure in here. The figure was it's kind of incidental to this particular picture because um, it's good for giving it a sense of scale and. Uh, giving it a, a, some sort of link there but that that was my main interest the background of course that wasn't moving and so I was able to sit there and paint that and just fit that around the figure that's different from this one that I'm doing here where thinking of simplifying this I've decided that my main and, and I'm sure if I was sitting there um, again doing this my main interest is in the figures on the bicycles there's lots of figures on bicycles but these two in particular interested me but i because i'm probably doing this quite quickly I, I want to leave a lot out so in this drawing that i've done and, and in fact in the practice one i did here we are i've got a i've got a picture of this this was a practice one i did i think um i've just concentrated on the two ladies with their bicycles, on their relationship to each other is very important. This is sort of the body language they have as they're moving from left to right. And given that this was a really a very hot day, I remember, um, I, I've decided that I will, I will make, I, I will make that statement with this shadow here. When we come to do the other painting. I, I, I guess I'm going to use this shadow, but I'm going to make it much more with the background, the darker background here. But here, I, I'm just working quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm using a pen. I, I'm going to make my drawing uh, here, and I'm using the coolness and uh, um, the, the, sh the shape of the shadows to tell a little bit of the story of the heat of the day. Okay. I'm trying to psych myself up to imagine I'm in Hoi An. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do this drawing. And every now and then I'll, I'll try and pause and tell you why I make sub marks in a certain way. Um, the, the relationship between the two ladies, the, the space in between them uh, here is quite important. And th they seem to be one of them seems to be intent, the one nearest us in, in, in moving forwards. And the other one looks as if she's slightly bent in talking to the other one who may or may not be listening to her. Uh, they've both got produce in their bikes and I've, I've decided to eliminate everything else other than the two ladies and the, um, the shadows. So let's have a look at this. Uh, here we go. Now, this is a permanent marking pen, so I can't change it. Uh, in fact, it doesn't really matter. I'll just keep working over it. Um, 
if, if I'm um, out sketching, of course, I don't have the luxury of with a pen just rubbing out. So we've got one lady here and in relationship to her, the other one's just down a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we can get it. She's, she's, she's looking at that one. So there's, there's a little bit more space. There's a little bit more space under a hat here then on the other side, just to try and give some sense, okay, that they're, they're very slight, these Vietnamese ladies, so there's not a lot of um, weight on them, so they're, they're quite narrow. Um, totally beautiful in their gorgeous dresses. I, I took lots of photographs of that when I was there. So, right, they're, they're both got bikes like that, handlebars, and this one is also... Got right, so they're very similar in that sense. The handle there, right, right? So so far so good. I think I'll 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 draw the figures in, put the bikes around them, so that, that I, they relate to it a little bit. Um, let's have a look. Uh, we've got a leg, one leg that sort of goes down there, and one leg that goes out there, and. Uh, Now the bikes. I want to try and get some semblance of it looking mechanical. Uh, and so I'm quite interested in the, the, the center of the back wheel here and the center of the front wheel, some sort of a line that lines them up will give me, an, it might make them look as if they're bicycles that have got half a chance of, uh, of um, working all right. Let's put a, a seat in here and I think it's the most difficult bit of it is, is just getting these circular wheels I find. Let's put a, it's going to be something like that. Let's get, I think there, let's go, let's see what we can do. Put a wheel, I've just gone for the center and I, I, I'll put the wheel in like that and I'll bring this back a bit and put a wheel in like that. That's rough. It's, it's got a fighting chance of working as a bike I think. Now um, put a basket on that, a, a bag hanging down here. Uh, and then they've got extraordinary amount of buckets and things that they carry. I, I, I did a drawing in a mini bus um, at some stage in this journey of uh, a motorcyclist, a cyclist who went by. I mean, as those of you who have been there, well, you know how much stuff that they carry on these bikes. This particular fella had an, had an eagle or a bird of prey on one arm. And he had that out stretched and he was using the other arm to to ride his bike and i, I thought that that was something i'd never seen before um all right if, have i have i put those wheels in the right place maybe maybe i have maybe i haven't okay let's have a look at this lady here she's got a uh oh center is about or the wheel is about there and it's a smaller it's a smaller one She's like that. She's got a basket. Um, and there's all the cogs and chain and everything that goes there. Let's see. Uh, these tires are going to be thicker, of course, so I don't know if I need to. I can suggest that with my paint in a moment. And there's lots of spokes. Yeah, I reckon I could have made that bigger, that rear wheel, but um, let's work with it and see what we can get out of that. 
Uh -huh. That's about as quickly as I have to draw outside. So when, when I was doing this drawing, I, I knew I had to have a relationship between these two figures here. Uh, I, I wanted to try and get one where, as I said, one was eyes intently ahead, looking forward, and the other one was sort of chatting with her head turned to her friend a little bit. Um, and so that negative space is what we call it between the two figures was, was, was quite important to get that intimacy going with that little negative space there. Um, that then I, I drew the figures, uh, just get an idea where their feet might be, something down like that, and then related the bike to it. Um, yeah, I definitely could have made that wheel a bit bigger, but let, let's not worry about that. You, you haven't got time when you're drawing like this to worry too much in the details. We're going to put some, I'm going to put some stuff, produce and everything in front of their bikes. And of course, um, and of course, uh, the shadow that's thrown from them, I'll, I'll, I won't draw that in. I'll I'll just add that. So so that that really is getting uh, to to the that that's the drawing. Now it might be that all you're doing is drawing, and you don't do any more than that. Or it might be that you've got felt tips or color pencils or or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to use my uh, little travel uh, water pot here, and I've got water in it. In Hoyana, got plenty of sunshine for things to dry very quickly, <laughs> as they did. Um, oh, that reminds me, I have to get a hair dryer here shortly. But um, and so let, let's go and have it now. It um, the, the process of working light to dark, um, putting in a wash, putting in more colours and more details, shadows and so forth, and then finishing off with any details is exactly the same with a sketch like this as it is with a other painting. It might be that you take shortcuts and you, you don't have time to, uh, to, to worry too much and you just let the whole thing run, which is what I'm going to do here. So um, let's just make a statement about, uh, about the warmth and um, just, this is a, a raw sienna or um, yellow ochre sort of colour, um, just coming away from the white of the paper. Uh, and um, I'm going to go and get my hair dry so I can speed things up a bit further. So I'll just let that fester for a moment. It might be that you you decide to sit there and you find yourself a nice spot and you go ahead and make your painting and and if you have taken a few photographs you pull those out to help you uh, as a reference point later on um, uh, and and whilst you're painting you're, you're kind of just taking the ambiance of the the environment you're in and uh, I, and that's really nice to, to paint that you just got a, a feel for all the noise and the bustles going on see if you can translate some of that into um your painting um that's that's as much if you like of a wash that i'm going to put on for the moment okay let's start popping in some colors here um these two ladies are wearing a lots of red wonderful red colors here so let's um put that in in fact i'll, I'll just vary it a little bit and uh and make this one a slightly pinkier one. Then this lady is here. And where there's light coming in uh, uh, around the shoulders, the the arms, whatever thing like that, I, I've um, just left little bits showing uh, there because that might help me later on. Let's pop in some uh, 
some clothes, some trousers. Uh, I'll put this lady with some sort of blue trousers. So uh, where is she? Yeah, she's here, some blue coming down here. And similarly, she, she's got something blue. The, the, the baskets hide a lot of what they're doing. Um, uh, so the, the colours I use here, by the way, um, uh, these are a, a replica of the colours I've got in my main pot, but there are half as many. So I, I'll just talk about the colours. I've got a uh, crimson red and a um, an orangey red, which is um, Windsor red, but cadmium red, even vermilion would, would be fine. Um, I have next to it a sap green. Uh, which is a very convenient green to put down and, and then, then add to it if you want to. I've got a, a burnt sienna here and I've got a burnt umber. A colour that I that might dispense with, um, but we'll see. And so I've got the two reds there and one or two other colours. And the blue is I've got an ultramarine blue which is the darker, warmer blue, uh, a um, cerulean blue, which is a cooler, um, more yellowy, greener blue. And then I've got two yellows, a, that's aurelian, I think. Um, I haven't, I haven't been able, I'm not able to fit gambos in there who have asked me that question before. And I've got a lemon yellow. And here I've got a, a raw sienna, but I think I'm going to substitute that eventually with um, yellow ochre. And lastly, I've got some neutral tint, which is my darkest colour. So, but these colours, when we come to the bigger one, that they'll, I'll mention them all again. But that's me whittling the colours down. So let's just uh, put one or two other little colours in here that uh, might be useful. Um, uh, so I've, I've got some sort of lemon yellow here that's uh, and for where the, they've got some produce in the baskets and it, it, the light is catching it. And then I'll go to my sap green and pop a little bit of that under it. Yeah, a bit of sap green like that something in the basket. Um, okay, uh, go back to the ladies, just put something down for their skin colour. Um, uh, this is burnt sienna. Okay. Um, reds are very powerful colour in Vietnam. So let's make that basket, mix the two reds I put and put uh, the, this, this um, the two big baskets she's got on the side of her uh, panniers at the back and um, one or two other little bits. Uh, I'll, I'll make something of a bit more orangey in here and, and, and make that basket somewhat orangey. And um, I'm just filling these spaces where they've got lots of baskets and bags, these ladies have got hold of them on. Okay, uh, splash in some uh, shadow here. So I'll, I'll take, uh, let's take this French ultramarine and add a bit of, um, a tiny little bit of burnt sienna. Let's see what I get. I don't want to make it too brown. I want it to be mostly uh, a blue. Uh, okay. And Put in some shadows here. So these are shadows that are cast by 
the um, bikes and, and the people having them. They've got a, some of the shadows that come from the ice school. And this one like that. And as shadows come away from whoever's casting the shadows, so they they get a week and weaker. So let's just um, just just do that or add more water and that makes them a bit weaker. And then I'll bring some shadows in under this lady's bike. From her feet and let's have lots of shadows in here. All right. Um, now with that shadow, I'm going to put some shadows on the women themselves. So a little bits of light still showing there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and take the shadow and put some there. And she's, I'll, I'll make that a slightly weaker shadow, a bit more water, and because of her pink costumes. Okay, um, one or two shadows in. Let's put some shadow in here. There's a bucket of some kind, so we'll put a shadow in there. Um, anywhere else I want to put a shadow at the moment. Right, and then get my little rigger. I could do this with uh, my pen, but um, I'm going to show you. I'll use the rigger. So I'll mix up, I won't go to the neutral tint. I might need to add some of that in a moment. So I'll go back to my ultramarine blue. I'm gonna make a sort of dark sludgy color here. If I want to make it even darker, I, it's a little bit neutral tint maybe. All right, and so let's put in some of the uh, the bike details here, so, uh, and um, spokes. So I'm, I'm sort of moving on really to, to the final stage of the painting where I'm just putting in details. Um, as I said, with something like this, you're, you're kind of mixing it all up as, and working as quickly as you can to make that bit thinner, not too, too thick. And and got a basket here of some kind. Back to the bikes. Now, whilst you're doing this out in the streets or wherever you are, you have lots of people coming around and looking over your shoulder. So if you haven't found yourself a really quiet spot, you're just going to have to ignore that. That's going on. Uh, let's put something for her bike or her bicycle here. And back to my shadow color a bit, nothing too dark, and, and just put that bit in shadow. Mm. 
and maybe some of her baskets and shadows and any other little dark bits what about just making that a little bit darker there give that some any other little darker bits uh, Um, right, that, that's working quickly in the sketchbook. Um, going through the process, first of all, of simplification, working out in your head what it is you want. I wanted to get the two ladies. I wanted to get some sense of heat in the day. Therefore, I'm going to make just the two ladies my subject matter and use the shadows here to suggest that there's the heat in, involved in it. I haven't done anything with the background here, which is what we're going to deal with in a moment. Um, and, um, and, and you just keep drawing and if, if it doesn't quite work out, you just, just work around it. And using a pen, of course, there's no, you, you can't rub things out. I, I use a pen a lot. I, I like the fact that you can't rub out. You're just go forced into making it work in, in some way or other. Back to the same scene. Let's have another look at it now. So you've 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 made your sketches. Um, you've um, you've taken them back home into your bedroom, your studio, or whatever it is you might, and you want to make a painting of them, either from photographs that you've got. Or you might have several photographs of different views of of this, or from your a sketchbook. Because I, the great thing about having done the work in a sketchbook is that you have spent all that time looking in fact you've you've spent your time doing more than looking you've spent your time seeing there's a difference between the two just to look where everybody looks but one of the things that happens as i'm sure you're all aware in your training as artists is that it helps you see uh, very much. It's a bit like going to a gallery. I will suggest with my students that I used to have that when they went to the galleries, they always sat in front of an exhibit and they drew from it. Uh, the reason was not to produce a great drawing, but the reason was to slow the students down so that they not only just looked, they saw. There's, an, there's a statistic at the National Gallery in London that says that most people look at the exhibits that are on the walls for seven seconds only. And five seconds of that is spent looking for the name of the artist. So, <laughs> so if you sit down and you get a piece of paper and actually draw, you're, 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 you're way ahead of the game in terms of actually looking. So we have done a lot of looking here and that's useful if you bring that into your bedroom or studio when you're going to make a, a painting. But the things that I'm going to bring out in this are going to be slightly different from the sketch where is in the sketch i ignored everything in the background and i just made that statement by putting a shadow in to try and make some statement about the the heat and the light uh here um i still want to get the heat and the light and i want to get uh the feel of there being a buzz and something else happening here i want to make the background work with the figures in the foreground and, and that's really nice. Those, those hats the ladies are wearing really stand out well um, uh, against the dark background. But if, if you look in the picture, there's all sorts of things going on in here. I've got a feeling I cropped this picture um, and I can't find the original one, but there's other bicycles here. Uh, there are bicycles, motorbikes here. There are people in the uh, in, in these little spaces, selling, uh, selling things, selling clothes. It's, it's a right old market going on here. And um, it, it, it doesn't, I have cropped this one because it doesn't show uh, everything, which I'm, uh, I'll sort of make up. But I, I want to get that feel, but I want to simplify it. Um, and so you'll see that I'm almost going to abstract what's going on in the background 
um, and just pick out one or two elements again to give me a statement of of, of it being a busy market street. Right, having just recapped on that, let's put that there so you can see it. This, this is the drawing I did. Now I'm hoping that if you're doing this, that you have made some kind of a, a drawing, however you want to, a, along these lines. Um, I, I have put the two figures in. I've actually even sort of marked up the um, shadows. I've decided that I want to put this figure in, who in, in fact is a lady sitting, half sitting on her motorbike, but I've, I've got rid of the motorbike and, and everything. I, I just want her in uh, with the umbrella over her and a little bit of light that shines on her. And I've put in some suggestion here of um, uh, the roofs that are creating all the darkness in here. Now, I, I'm going to add some sort of foliage here. I just want to bring in some color. Um, I can't, I've got a feeling the picture that I put out, or you put out your marketing, must have been larger than this picture, uh, Lois, I think. But so I'm hoping in the picture you've, you've got, you will see more going on there. But um, it, in a sense, it doesn't matter too much. In, in, in one way, maybe it helps a bit. So do I want to do any more drawing than this? Um, I, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to um, suggest, you can, you can see at the top, there's some branches and things. I think we'll just bring a bit of light coming through the branches here. And, um, and some sort of foliage down here. I'm just adding that. Um, a little bit there. Um, I, I won't worry about anything that's going on inside the, the shops they've got there. I think I think that's what I'm doing. So in my drawing, I've I've got the two ladies. I've got their relationship to each other, moving along from left to right. Um, they're very dominant in this uh, picture. I've deliberately made them dominant. Uh, but I've brought in another figure, which is obviously smaller, um, who's who's also doing some shopping. Uh, 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 the umbrella there, I like that there because that's in front of the darkness and that, that's quite good. Uh, but I've left out any other figures I see around here, any, any figures that I've seen here, all the motorbikes and things that are piled up on the sides. I've left all of that out. Now, what I'd like to know is is everybody ready for me to move on to the next stage, which will be, because there are four stages of this. The first is the drawing, which also includes thinking about the composition and uh, working things out like that. Uh, but what, once you've drawn what you need to draw to help you make your painting, uh, the next stage would be to put a wash down, the lightest colors, because we work from light to dark. And then when that is dry, put down other colors, all the colors of the markets that you see around, including shadows and so forth. And then take it to the stage where you sit back and you think, now what more do I need to do just to make it finally work? Um, and that, that usually involves putting in some very, very much darker things and also some very much lighter things. What I didn't do, because uh, I'm running ahead of myself, is just have a word on my materials. This paper is, um, this is Archer's cold press, or not, it's a sort of medium surface, but it is 100% uh, rag content, cotton rag content, which makes it very absorbent, which is what I would recommend. There's nothing to say you can't paint on pretty much any paper, but but you, you'll find this works better generally for traditional watercolor anyway. Um, I've got uh, my paints are all uh, artist quality. Um, many of them are translucent, but not all of them. And some of these are the paints that I had in that little set I've got here. And I'll go through those as I use them and talk about them when we have little gaps as well. Uh, so that um, 
I, I don't hold you up too much. And the brushes I'm going to use, first of all, I'll use a large mop brush, which is a squirrel head brush. Um, it's called a filbert shape, that is, but you can get them in all sorts of different shapes. Um, I'm going to use a small mop brush uh, there. Um, I will probably use my rigger, which is very similar to the one I used before, except it's got the whole handle. And I'm not sure that there is a brush I use, I might use here, which is um, just a children's brush with having had a very bad haircut. We're putting a wash down on here. It's a hot day. Um, and I'd like to put in something of the warmth. Uh, on my sketch, I, I picked up a little bit of um, raw sienna, I think it was. Uh, I, I like to put some of that down on here and then uh, bring in uh, other light colors. You know, I'm going to have some light coming in these bushes here. I'm gonna have some, a little set of bushes here, I think, J just to have some light coming in it's a, it's a sort of balancing thing composition wise just as i've got this light coming on the umbrella here on that side i want something light coming on here and then that's going to help to emphasize the light that will be flooding around the edges of the figures and one or two other bits and this darkness that we've got here so using the big mop brush and and picking up this color. Now this is yellow ochre I'm using here. Raw sienna would be fine. I'm finding that more and more I'm using yellow ochre. Um, I think really because raw sienna, of, more often than not, just tends to, to be, unless I want it to be, just tends to be a little bit too yellow. So um, a lot of water on my brush. Now you could, if you want, flood the whole thing with uh, a spray uh, and uh, I use it occasionally, not very often, um, but I, I intend flooding it with lots of water from my brush and see where, where that takes me. There is, there's nothing here really that can't be affected by this light. I, I wanna make sure that those hats are kept light. So let's, let's, Put this around here. I'll just leave. No, I, I'll go I'll put the whole lot down. Just let's put some this raw sienna down here because that is essentially the light that is um, pretty much the whole scene. It gets lost in the shadows, of course. And um, in in this foreground area, um, I, I'm I'm happy just to do brush strokes over it so you get a dry brush marks. I'm I'm not. <coughs> Uh, so worried about um, having that covered. Now, in this area here where uh, I've got this green foliage, I, I think I'll go to my lemon yellow and, and put a bit in there. Let's just see if... And, and that's merging in. I'm, I'm, I'm not fussed about going to the edge of my paper, by the way, so... Um, don't, don't worry if you're not going to yours. So I'm going to put in some of that there. Um, and um, whilst it's so wet, I'll, I'll get a tissue and I'll just mop out some of that but, uh, yellow ochre on the hat there, you know, just over the hats like that. So we, we keep those looking, singing nice and white. Um, and... Um, now, uh, for, let me see, for the, um, the dark area here, I, 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 I'll pop in a little bit of red. This is, I talked about the areas being kind of abstract uh, and, and I, not too specific. So let's, let's pick up maybe, um, A little bit of red here, and uh, and start popping in some some colours in into the background. 
Now, th these will be all sorts of things, clothes or whatever they might be. Um, too much red, so we'll, that's fine. And um, you'll find that by the time you come to dealing with this and you're uh, putting in darker colors, these, what you're putting in here will be useful to you. Um, when, you, when you're just getting an abstract quality of what's going on. Let's pick up a bit of burnt. Uh, no, that's not the color I want. Um, yeah, no, th this is a color called um, light red. Let's just put a bit of that in here. Um, this is all the sort of the dark background um, at this stage. Uh, if you haven't got light red, you could use um, burnt sienna, something like this color. It's a little browner, that's all. I'm leaving out things like the umbrella. I'm leaving out the light on all these roofs here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really just putting in things that might be helpful to the background, the abstract background. See, it's a sort of mixture of colors here. Everyone will, will do this slightly differently, but you, you'll see as we go along how that will be useful to you. And um, Okay, a little bit more blue somewhere. Let's um, just make a little bit stronger blue and some blue there. Right, so it's, it's pretty splodgy. It's um, the area of the darkness um, in, in here. Um, and I will I'll just take it away from her dress. I don't, I don't need blue going on that at the moment. Uh, the hats are in tight. Everything else is pretty good here. Now, do I need to add any more uh, shadows? Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make these boxes of some kind. So I'll just pop in something like that. And I'm not quite sure what to do here. But, um, what shall I do? I, I think I'll, I, I don't think I'll worry about it. It's not actually getting in the way of what I want to achieve. I want to achieve dark setting up the light of the, the people in front of it and the light on the street and various things happening in the marketplace. I don't want to, do I want to do anything on these roofs at this stage? Uh, yeah, okay, so let's, let's, let's go to Burnt Sienna and I've got some Wrigley tin roofs going on here. So let's just pop in something there from Burnt, a bit of, um, uh, burnt sienna, just something like that might be useful later on. Um, nothing that I can't handle uh, later. Yeah, I think that's as far as I'm going with the wash. Let me just recap on what I've done here. Uh, it, it's so much about light and warmth uh, and um, Therefore, I, I, I went for a colour like raw sienna or yellow ochre, and I pretty much flooded everything. Uh, I went back and just touched out their hats because I want to try and keep those pristine white, and I can always make them uh, change something over the top later on. Uh, I, bought, I, I knew I wanted some light coming in from this side, so some branches, uh, some, something light, light here. I'm thinking quite abstract at this term. And um, and this area that's going on, which will be very dark behind the figures, uh, I, I wanted there to be 
are suggestions of things going on, colours, and doesn't really matter what it is. So on top of the yellow ochre that I put down, I then dropped in some red, uh, some blue, um, some light reds or burnt siennas, one or two things like that. Generally kept that away from um, uh, the, the figures that, that didn't need to be in the darkness. I also put this in because these are going to be some boxes, but it, to be honest with you, I could, have, I could have done that later on. And I don't need to go putting any more detail than that in here just at the moment. Oh yes, I, I dropped in uh, some color here, which was suggests some um, corrugated tin, uh, which um, again, I could do later, but it's quite nice to have that light color in here at this stage. So I will stop here. I'm going to dry this with my hairdryer. And when you have put in your, uh, your, your wash colors, then would you please dry yours? Because we want to try and get the paper bone dried before we move on. Sometimes when you do these quick works in a sketchbook, you, you find you've probably got some sort of um, feel uh, for what you're looking at which often is greater than if you sit down with hours available to you, you'll, um, you'll achieve cheap. So to try and keep the thing loose uh, and the, have the feel, some of the feel of what we had with the sketch. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll try and do that and, and try not to treat it as a complete painting by numbers exercise. But hopefully we've got down here um, at the basis of our washes that we, we, we can start working on. And now in this third step, and this will be the longest of the steps, I imagine, we're going to try and achieve what we did in that sketch, but, but maybe with a little bit, we've got a little bit more information to, to deal with here. Uh, we, we're still, still keeping in our heads the need for the background informing what's going on in the foreground. Um, and I'm just trying to work out which way around I'll do this. I'll leave that to later. Okay, I'm going to bring in some other colors that uh, I think would be helpful. I might even have thought of put, putting them in before, but uh, I'm looking at what I've got. Uh, I'm uh, the, the light that's shining through these trees and onto the roofs here um, it, it will sing out eventually when you we put the the darks in against it but i just like to bring in one or two other slight colors here such as um i i, I pop this rusty sort of color in here for the uh the wriggly tin um uh, that wriggly tin is um corrugated tin so i'm, I'm going to mix um some sort of a a, a gray so any any kind of blue any kind of red, ju just to come up with, um, I'm going to put some of that there for, um, throw a bit of color into that. I'll, I'll come back to that later. So that, that will be dry. That's the sort of thing I might have popped in when I was doing a, uh, um, a wash, but I didn't think of that. Um, let's deal with 
with something here. And uh, again, I'm talking fairly abstract, but I've, in order to get the light coming through the leaves here, I've got to bring in some dark to it. So, um, I'm going to my sap green, uh, talking about greens, rosemary. Okay, I'm not much green involved in this. And that, that's way, way too light for what I want. But if I add um, some ultramarine blue, let's just see what we get here. Just so we, we get a dark green of some kind. Yeah. And, um, I, I, and I'm using my brush. Uh, I could use this bad haircut brush, in a sense, I'm using this brush as if it's a bad haircut. I'm just popping in uh, some some marks there, which are going to be darker. And whilst whilst these are still a little bit wet, um, let's go back and make make that a darker green still with a little more ultramarine blue, and maybe add some brown to that make it strong almost no water in it and because there's water on the page here I'm just going to just vary some of that a little bit yeah I can come back right just I, I'm I'm not covering all of it completely but I'm, I'm just adding some darker bits in there and and we'll let the uh, we'll we'll let the watercolor paint itself so it's a slight variations of dark okay that that's we'll see how that looks and, and come back to it a little later on um and I'm going to go into this background beside it here, just thinking about it. Uh, and, and here you just need to be a little bit brave. Uh, I'm using a smaller mop for this. Um, and let, let's start off maybe with a color like, um, say, burnt sienna. And I'll add, I'll darken that by adding some ultramarine blue to it. And let's just put in some marks there to see how I'm going up. The, these colors that we put in in the um, washes, the, the, let's, um, don't, don't ignore those. I mean, let, let something, you know, I just want some of that blue to sing out. Um, and And some of these reds here just leave leave, leave little spaces. I'm, I'm doing that bad haircut thing because I've got some bushes here. Uh, all right, and I, I like all that blue, so I'm going to leave a bit more of that blue showing. Come around this lady's hat. Come down to. Her, um, arms and so forth. And if you leave little bits out, that that that's really what I'm recommending you do. In fact, um, I don't feel you. Uh, now, whilst things are still a little bit wet there, and this is a this is a good thing you do with watercolor. Let's let's get something so a lot darker, ultramarine blue, and uh, I'm just going to pop little bits in here, and it'll it'll the paint will do what it does really well it'll um start to paint itself a little bit here so let, let's put a bit more of that in. i'm going to leave a bit of blue here some of that in up up to the women i use the word abstract for this advisedly because if you treat it as um, as just a series of 
the out of focus background colors really um I'll, I'll go around that post something like that i'm deliberately leaving various um shapes and marks in here so i'll move around mix up a bit more raw sienna and um It's the darkness against these ladies, which is really going to make them stand out. You can already see that happening. So let's um, let's suggest some, a few poles here and a, a window, maybe whatever you want. I'll bring in some. I'll bring in some other colors here to play around with. Uh, I've, I've got a, uh, a mauve color here. So let's just see, bring a bit of mauve, just to balance the colors off a bit, a bit of mauve there. So what I'm working towards, so you're you're just aware of it, is here's a practice one. Um, where where there are just going to be little suggestions of things coming through, lights coming through. We can darken things up. We can add other little colours to it. But this is all in. This is all sort of working the abstract that I'm talking about. And I'm working around. Oh, I, I wanted to put something in her. her um, let's put something in in her um, basket there. I forgot about the basket. I should have done something like that. Something a bit green, maybe even. All right. Um, Come around this lady. Add something a little bit blue to that. And it's all these little uh, gaps and lines, with, with, uh, marks that I'm leaving here, which you, you'll find will be useful to you as we add other colors to it to darken it up. Um, as we move around, so let's. So don't don't worry about if you haven't covered it all. That's a good idea that you don't cover it all. So let's take this out here a wee bit. I'm not sure what's going to happen. This is sort of tailing off a little bit. The painting here um, on the edges. And I'm sort of coming down to roughly where things might end a little bit. Um, a few boxes on the ground or something like that. It it's really doesn't matter. Uh, okay, let's. So it looks pretty wild and abstract uh, at the moment um, and that's fine and that's got us started on the background when when we come up uh, in the background to some of this foliage you, you, you can use your brush source and, and get these arbitrary marks here which will eventually give us some idea of it, the arbitrary nature of um, 
of, of the darkness of the foliage. Let's see how we get on with that for the moment. Now, we made enough of a statement about the background. I don't see this post as being incredibly important, but let's, let's put something in there, right. Um, right, let's put a, one or two other little bits of details in here. It's, uh, some, the boxes that I talked about. So I'm, I've just gone to a yellow ochre, uh, pick up something a little bit darker and, uh, and, 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 and just vary the, the, the sort of wooden boxes of some kind, but you, you can put anything you like there. Um, Just add a, a little bit of texture to that. We've got shadows to go in there, so, so that'll be fine. Something there. Um, so we leave that background just for a moment. Come back to it, let, let, let it just sort of paint itself and so forth and turn our attention to uh, the ladies that we can see, the two on the bikes and the one, the one that's leaning over the boxes or doing some shopping at the back there. Right, so this is along the lines of um, what we did on that short one. So uh, let's, um, let's, let's pick up a red here. Uh, this is my light red I'm using. So I'm looking at the two, the reds of the two ladies' clothing and um, and and the light that catches their um, the edges of their shoulders and so forth. You, you if you leave those little gaps there, that's quite good. And that that will help us. Um, okay, she's got a nice red garment on, and um, let's give her some trousers, as we did in the first drawing painting. We put some something here. And um, we've got a basket or some kind of We don't need to be precise with that. And I'm going to go to uh, the other lady. Um, oh, well, what I, whilst I'm with this one, I'll pick up, say, some burnt sienna and just Put something in here which, which um, can be for her skin color. Uh, and let's go to the other lady. I think I'll give her, as I did last time, a slightly lighter uh, pinker outfit just to vary it a bit. Leaving any gaps you can. We the, Those light bits we, we can um, We can deal with that. We can add light to it later on. We'll, we'll deal with that. And then she's pretty much wearing the same. It's amazing how many of them wear the same clothes out there. Uh, so we'll put you, so let's put her, wait, we've got some legs coming down here. Um, I don't know where her legs are. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Just put something in for the legs. And put something in for her face. Okay. 
Oh, I'd like to give them some produce in their baskets. I hadn't thought of doing that. So let's just, uh, you put in there whatever you think that they're, they might have got. She's got a lot of greenery in hers and she's also got some. Uh, so I've, I've just brought in some lemon yellow there, a little bit of something a bit green darkness. They're, they've got a number of things hanging off their bikes, uh, these ladies. Um, so we'll, um, we can add more to that if we want to. So there's things going on here. Uh, these panniers they've got at the back. Let's, um, uh, let's make those slightly orange here. Yeah, I do have a, a Windsor orange here, this colour. I think I've mentioned all the other colours I've used so far. We've used burnt sienna, um, lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, a bit of mauve I, I put in, uh, sap green, uh, yellow ochre. I, I actually, I, this is a colour I don't often use, light red, but I, I can't remember if I use it or not. But uh, it's not totally dissimilar to burnt sienna. And I, I'm not going to use that orange. I'm going to mix an orange. So let's, let's pick up a sort of middle yellow and add a bit of red to it. Too much. And, and then put that in as something more orangey. Whatever you like, whatever colours you like. I, I'm, the, the light glints on it. A bit, so I'm, I'm just leaving little bits of uh, of paper free, so that we they can suggest that there is light on it. But um, again, we can add light uh, to that, and and I'm going to bring that colour all the way through, but to the other side of the bike, although it's in shadow. Um, yeah. Although it's in shadow, that will be fine. And um, this lady in the front has got another container of some kind. So let's pick up something grey, sludgy, and just you, you, you choose what colour you want it to be. Um, I'm just, you know, it's interesting. There's some light on the saddle of her uh, bike and, and so we can make that appear um, quite bright by putting dark things against it. So I've got that against it. I'm, I'm just going to soften the edge of, of that and um, and have a clip of light coming in here. Right. Um, what about some? I give her. An, I, I'll give her another orange bag here. I think that this this looks quite good right in the centre. Uh, where's Where's this one go? It's hanging off the handlebars. Uh, it's not very bright. So it's um, some sort of a bag like that. And she's got um, a, a a dark leather bag around her. I can give her that. So I'll go back to my burnt uh, sienna and just give her this some sort of dark bag here. Lots of stuff. Um, He's got some sort of bluey see-through plastic bag here. We'll put some, some of that colour in. And um, yeah, and we're getting there with the ladies at the moment. I'll come back to them if I need to at some point. Uh, this, this lady that's standing here, uh, leaning over here, um, Right, let's do something with her. 
I, I don't think I'll show as much of her face as I have done there. So I'll bring the hat down here a bit, I think. Yeah. And give her some sort of a blue garment. Let's. Um, She's leaning over the boxes, I think. She's actually sitting on a bike, but I've taken the bike out and I just said I was going to do that. So let's, um, I, I got rid of the paint from my brush and I've just added a bit of water there. Let's just see if that, that will help create the light that's coming on her back a little bit more there. And her um, trousers, she's probably got black trousers. Let's, let's get some of this dark blue and add some brown to it and put these in, we can make them in. So that, that's going to be something like, um, let's see, the feet a little bit, so it'll be fine. Um, Add some darker blue. Okay, so she's she's there, sitting down, leaning over, doing some. Uh, 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 right, I, I'm going to use my move again. If you want to mix a move, and you don't have it, then that that is, um, it's it's quite a ready sort of color. So if you've got ultramarine blue, and a bit of crimson, lizard and crimson or something, and you mix those two, you'd get something pretty close to a mauve like this. So let's, um, there are little bits of it which catch the light ever so slightly, don't they? Yeah. Maybe not that one. If we want to show the light, we'll just run some more water in it. Something like that. Something like that. We leave her hat, we leave their hats. Um, we'll um, We'll come back to the bikes in a moment. Let's see if there's anything else I want to put on the bikes. Anything else I want to add around here um, that I can't do later. Um, Okay, I'm going to come up now to the the roof up there and do something with that in a moment. But I, I'll I'll just slow down a bit at this moment, just to let you sort of catch up. So we're what we're doing here is we're putting colours around, creating uh, the colours. I think when we start to bring the shadows in as we did with the sketch at the start that that will um that will start to bring it to, to life a little bit more in a moment i'm going to go up to the roof line and put some information in there and then drop down but into this background and and uh, take another look at that because I'll, if you go squinty eye and you look at the background in the photograph it's almost completely black but if you go squinty eye and you look at what i've done here anyway um i i, I want to subdue a lot of those lighter bits coming out but i still want to have suggestions of colors uh, and different things going on in the background so we've got some blues and purples and light reds and 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 all of that sort of thing.
So let's see what we can do with, with the, do as little as we can to, to um, get away with it. Uh, it. It is what's called contrapositive, it's against the light. So we've got the light so sort of very much coming down here and the shadows fall on the roofs and th this part of the wall of which I'm not showing very much um, is very dark up there. So let's just see what we need to do. Um, I, th I think the most useful thing I can do is, is get a sort of shadow color. I've, I've got various colors that we added a little bit of something gray up there to the brown we put in. I just wanted to play around the color. So what I'm going to do is, is, is get myself um, a shadow color. I'm going to put the shadows in where the where the wrinkly tin is, um, where the where the shadows come down on on the roof from the wall that's behind it, and where we've got some shadows. Because it's made up of bits of tin and wood and things like that. It's all it's all very um, a strong wind would blow it all down. So I'm going to mix up a colour. I'm going to my cobalt blue. So here we are. So there's another blue I'm using now. Cobalt blue, which is of the blues I've got. If you remember, uh, ultramarine blue that we have used is a, a darker, but importantly, a more red blue. At the other end of the um, warmth spectrum is cerulean, which is a lighter, cooler. It's got more yellow in it, sort of has a more, by comparison, it has more greeny feel. And then somewhere in the middle is this cobalt. So if I pick up that, I, I, I just don't want my shadows to be too dark at the moment so I'm, I'll go for the lighter blue and I'll go back to my burnt sienna and put a little bit of that in and I've got this sort of bluey grey is that what I want um could be let's just see it may not be strong enough let's let, let's just put in some of the uh now, what's that? Where's this photograph? It's always a bit tricky doing this. So. We've got all these little shapes here. And this is the sort of wall. It's come up against the... Uh, coming up against the, the um, leaves and so forth. We'll put little bit of that and we'll, we'll bring that shadow down um, across some of these. There's not much detail we see here at the moment, not as much as this one. So we just make some sort of a suggestion of the shadows coming down and Uh, just some sort of suggestion, nothing too much at the moment. And then we're going to move on to here. Um, the and I think you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. The same sort of thing we're going to take. Um, This isn't actually the very darkest of the shadows. We'll do that right at the end, but it's it, it'll give us the main idea of what's going on. So we've got some, you may not have put any of this in, which might be sensible. Um, okay, and then we've got some suggestion of The watermill has got some, if you look down on the roofs, there's some lovely shapes of the tiles to paint there. There, so I'm, I'm coming up with 
some suggestion of just trying to just very slightly suggest the uh, the wrinkly nature of the of the metal roof there so we'll do yeah. hope you can see what i'm kind of trying to achieve it it really doesn't matter if you get that exactly right let's just put, put that across there um and and i'm coming off i'm coming off my um page here not too fussed about that Right, I've still got that shadow colour, it's just a little bit uh, cobalt and burnt sienna. Uh, right, let's pop that in a couple of other places. Maybe we've got a little bit of wrinkly tin here. And I'm looking at the photograph to see if it give me some ideas. and. Uh, If you want to use a smaller brush uh, than I'm using, that that's just fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm some suggestion that this is one um, bit of wood overlapping another one. If I put a little bit of shadow there, it gives it a bit of thickness. And right, let's see. We'll come back and pop in a couple of the. A darker bits to that later on. Okay. Um, yeah. What, whilst I'm at it, th this wall that I've, I've done here is, uh, I think that needs to be a lot darker. So I'll, I'll pick up some burnt sienna and. Maybe just put that there. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to do something here to make this work a bit better. It's not working my painting and um, and let's see, how should we deal with that? I, again, I want to keep it quite abstract. I, I'm gonna bring in some green here, I think here. So I'll go to my sap green. Uh, and a little bit of sap green and um, Just put a bit of green in there and I'll soften the edges just with my, my, my fingers and, and then the, let's see what happens if I bring some ultramarine blue in and a little bit of brown and then we bring that up to the panniers and and just let that merge in a little bit there and I'm going to do the same this is the most tricky bit of the painting actually uh, I'm going to do the same here and come in and all right abstract in, in the tin, I'm quite sure what it is, but we'll, we'll come back and see what we need to do with that. Now, look at this background here, and I suggest that I'm going to mix up. I, I'm, I'm going to go to my um, 
burnt umber, which is a sort of warmer red, raw umber, which I do have here, is much is, is slightly bluer, cooler. So let's go for something here and um, if I sweep it. If I sweep it over much of this, it will still have what's light under it showing in. We'll see, we'll see there. Something like that's going to be quite dark, come up to the post. And if I want to make, I'm going to make this even darker here. So I'll pick up some of my neutral tint. It's all wet. Neutral tint, pure, and just add a little bit there and let it sort of paint its way. And it's, it's quite dark in there and, and just add a little bit of, whilst it's all wet, it will start painting itself and, um, Okay, it's just left a few little marks there. And I'll come in and do much the same here as well. Go back to my burnt umber. Um, maybe make it a bit lighter in some places. Going around the hats. Put a bit of neutral tint in there just to bring send it further back a little bit in there and um, uh, come in under this bit. So what we did really was we created a lot of some colors, some shapes, left little gaps, you know, which could be anything, just picking up a bit of light, it could be garments, it could just be a window, it could be a doorway whatever you want it to be. Um, I, I'm deliberately making it almost nothing dark abstract just to see how that goes. Uh, oh, she had a, this lady had a a bag. I've forgotten the bag, but we have to ignore the bag now. She did have a bag, so it would have been quite nice if we put a bag in there. Um, and because watercolour dries lighter you'll find that although you've covered it over with brown and, and in some places I've added um, a bit of water for, for instance I think I'm going to bring something suggest there's a doorway or something here something like that yeah and um, maybe another one here Right. I mean, it could be a doorway, it could be anything. Just, just, have I, as I've said before, we're just sort of abstracting it. Here we go. Um, and anything else you want to do with it. So that, that simplified the background. Um, in, I, it was another little practice one I did here uh, where I didn't simplify it so much and I had some sort of people, suggestions of people in here and boxes and so forth. Um, and in fact, I've added some more here, but I mean, that, I mean that, that's fine. You know, if we, that let's just in fact let's just put an idea of a person in the background here so i don't know if it's still too wet maybe it's a bit too wet yeah a bit too wet we'll come back to that and, and do something with it okay. 
so I'm going to leave all this now until we come in to, uh, to, to do our final bit. And then I'm coming down now into the figures, the bikes, the shadows, and whatever is happening here. Now that yellow ochre we put down at the start, it's almost as if it never appeared there. Um, and um, if I want to bring it back up, I can do that a little bit later on. Right. Um, I, I think what I'm dealing with here is shadows. And as we did with the sketch, So let's stay with the same sort of colours uh, for the, the, the basic shadow, I, which I'll use cobalt and burnt sienna, but I can lighten it or darken it or add other colours to it particularly. I mean, what's interesting is the thrown shadows from the bikes and everything are, are more intense right underneath where the, the bikes themselves and they get, they get lighter and lighter as they come away. Actually, it'd been quite nice to have had a bit more paper here. I maybe if I were recomposing this, I'd I'd, uh, I'd maybe have a little bit more paper. But um, it matters not because uh, the foreground is quite quite useful. Um, okay, shadows. So I'm I'll go to my cobalt. I'm going to continue using this brush, this smaller mop. I haven't used. I didn't use a rigor at all, I don't think, this brush. Um, I did use the large mop from time. I didn't use this, although I, I achieved the same thing just by stabbing um, the small wash brush. Okay, let's just get a bit of blue into our shadow. And, and so it's slightly cool. And a little bit of red in the form of burnt sienna. How's that looking? Yeah, that's probably not so bad. And where do we need to go with this? I'm, I'm going to work down the page. In fact, let's mix up a, a large quantity. A larger quantity, a bit more cobalt blue, a bit more water, and burnt sienna. And um, I'm going, I'm going to take that over the whole of this. You'd hardly notice it. Bring it down to here. And bring that shadow down to here where these boxes, let's just suggest, um, I think I need to make this a bit darker, the shadow, let's just see, I suggest, yeah, a bit, it's not quite strong enough, that bit there, let's just uh, make that a bit stronger. So, and um, put some shadows underneath these boxes of some kind. It, it, it kind of doesn't matter in a sense. Um, we'll I 
again, they're, they're pretty abstract sort of boxes. I've just got a bit of light, uh, shadow underneath them as if they're on stands of some kind. Um, I've taken that shadow onto the, her ladyship here. Let's just... Um, bring that I, I just want to soften that shadow so i've just squeezed the paint out of this brush um, and, and and just soften the edge a little bit and in fact i'm going to bring some of that onto her hat a little bit so it's it's just catching catching the light there that's probably as much as i need to do to her um, and um, pop a little bit of that maybe onto the umbrella shadow, just to make that stand out. And uh, maybe here, just her elbow, some way. Right, that's probably as old. Oh, um, yeah, I mix up some more shadow. So I'm going to bring the shadow onto the people here and onto the bike, but I'll I'll do something a bit more to the shadow that's been cast by the woman and by the boxes. So I'm roughly going back to where I was. It's my third time mixing it now. Um, I think I don't need to have. I think. There's not much, not much showing there, and we'll we'll bring the shadow. Then that comes down onto the ground. Look, something like that. Okay, that's probably enough there. Right. Okay, moving on to, uh, because the light's coming from behind our ladies and uh, uh, a lot of their garments are in shadow. We'll put their, their face in shadow here. Um, if, if ever at any point you want to just soften the shadows uh, we're using, uh, or darken them, you can add more. We 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 will go back. Let's so we've got various things catching the light. Um, I think I'm just going to soften the shadow. That this is just drying the brush out. Just soften the shadow here a little bit, and Okay, so what else do we need to put in shadow? This um, the shadows maybe under here. And this these panniers that are sort of around the back. Um, I'm going to soften these edges a bit. There we go. Uh, I'll take a look at the other lady. She's, her whole face is in shadow. So much of her body is in shadow. And we leave some sort of idea of the light around the edges.
Okay, bring some of the shadows now onto their produce. They've got their bikes. And if I want to add any other colors to that. So what are we doing here? We're just adding a little bit of stuff that they've Now I'm going to move on to the cast shadows in the bike, I think. More cobalt, a bit more burnt sienna. So the shadows I'm doing are deliberately sort of bluey shadows and shadows of all colours, green, pink, whatever you like, but these ones are right. Now I, I talked about the shadows being a bit darker, immediately under where that they're standing and so from getting lighter. So let's see if we can um achieve some of that. She's got a, a shadow from the wheel, which is quite nice. I've lost, I've lost the plot as to what's happening in these bikes. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but so if I want to make that uh, lighter at the end there, that shadow, I've just taken the paint out of my brush. I could just lift it a bit. Yeah, or um, just lift it a little bit with tissue once it's so wet and and if I want to add some whilst it's still there something a bit darker let's get a, a little bit of ultramarine blue and I just make oh it's gone too brown and just make or even even just more cobalt blue and something and just um whilst it's all wet it will start to paint yourself let's go back to the rest of the shadows here um where are we uh got, she's got shadows coming from her that's not quite strong enough a little bit stronger she's got shadows coming from here coming from here uh got shadows from her bike sort of like that uh, i mean you make up your shadows, but uh, again, we've got this business of shadows immediately under them all. Let's put something here and um, I'm going to soften these shadows as they come towards us a bit now any one of a number of ways i can do it. i can add water or i can just take away whilst it's all wet it will it will start to it will start to merge itself let's see what's going on here let's bring a little bit more shadow in what's going on here and something a bit darker yeah, maybe. This this part of the shadow. Any more I want to add? It's just okay. Right. Um. Also. I, I just want to mess up the road a little bit because it looks far too pristine. So just taking some of 
the shadow here. Let's just make a few little track marks through. Now uh, this might prove useful. Just just to mess it up a little bit. Something like that. Right, shadows on these panniers here. And um, anything else? A shadow. Right, we're, we're getting close to the point where we'll we'll leave this stage and then come back and finish it off. So let's see. Oh no, I, I'm going to put the bike in, and then then we'll have finished it off. So I, I I'm going to work with my um, small wash brush here, but you could work with the rigger or something else like that. And I, do, I don't want to jet black for the, I mean, the neutral tint is quite good because it's it's not jet black. Let's just add some neutral tint in here and see what we're getting. Um, unless you want to make the bikes a different color. We're doing fine, we've got three quarters for now. Right, let's, um, or maybe I will use my rigger for some of it. So I've, I've got that handy. Uh, right. Um, I think I can. Yeah, let's just deal with the bike. Is, is this wet still? Let's have a look. That's fine. Let's, um, I'm having a look at the the painting of the. Um, the photograph here, so let's take. Oops, that's wet, so I'm not worry about that too much. It's probably a bit wet as well. And that's a bit wet, so we'll come back to that. I'm picking up the rigger. Let's put some of these. Um, details in with the uh, shopping baskets and, and and do as little as we can to to say that they're shopping baskets And this basket of hers, I'll make this a wire one as well, I think. That's as easy with my bigger. Right, so just. Drawing my shadows just for a second. And, right, finish the bike and then we finish this stage and, and then we see what we need to do to make it finally work. So I'm adding a little bit more neutral tint to this sludgy mixture here. And um, put in some. One or two little marks, which will tell us, suggest something about the bike, the mechanisms of the bike. Uh, photograph. There's some, some of the chrome on the wheels is shining, but we, we can 
deal with that later. Wheel. A bit like drawing ellipses and jugs and so forth. The, um, the wheels are often a tricky thing to do, particularly when they're at angles, Stu. So we, we've got If in doubt, we'll just make some dark areas. We'll bring this wheel onto here. Um, my rigger, put a chain on. And um, some sort of suggestion of spokes. And the other lady's bike. What's that looking like? I think I nearly finished the bikes now, but apart from the, just checking them out, some, some spokes. I think they need to be a bit darker, so I'll add a a little bit more neutral tint and, and these are still fairly wet the wheels so I just pop in a darkness there right that's taken with there the last bit won't take long. That's taken us up to uh, the end of the this third stage where we've added colors, uh, we've added uh, other things of, of um, interest, tones, shadows, uh, but we've left out any final details. And for instance, we need to do something on, on the roofs just to make them sing a little bit more. Uh, just one or two little details with the figures and the boxes here. Um, and, uh, and and then see how the whole thing looks. So this last stage is, is putting in accents just to make things sing a little bit more. I want a little bit more strong light on the roofs here. Uh, I mean, they are really, really strong there. So what I'll do is um, I'll go to my sludgy color um, here. Let's, Put a bit of ultramarine in and some um, burnt sienna. So I've got I've got quite a dark sludgy colour here. Let's see how that goes. And um, add one or two little. I'm using my rigger. The light's coming from this side. Remember, so let's just. Uh, put in some of the darknesses there, just a little bit. That's 
you can see that that's making the thing look as if it's a lot, the light's a lot stronger. So that you put the dark against it and it makes the lighter bits appearing lighter. So let's do, do something here. Um, Just a little touch increases the impact of the light. We're dealing with magic here, it's just a suggestion. It's only paint on a bit of paper, not really a roof, not really a Vietnamese scene, it's just a suggestion, right. Um, Okay, a little, uh, so having put the shadows in, I, I, I'm sort of going into the areas where um, it, the sun never shines. Right, let's just dump something there. Um, Talked about adding some figures. Here, let's just add you a figure. Um, what do we got? Uh, right now. How is that working as a figure, you may ask? Like this. Bit of negative painting, there's a potential for a figure there. You can see those first tentative marks we made putting um, stuff in the background, how you can do so much to um, paint over it and oh, I don't know about that figure. Anyway, that, that has put a, a figure in there. Um, Right, that's enough, I think, for the background. Let's just do something here. It's all looking a bit light. And then let's move on down and complete the rest of the painting. Okay. I'm looking at dark colors again. I'll go to my ultramarine blue and um, a bit of, uh, I think she needs to be a bit darker there. We'll. These boxes, let's give them a little bit of a helping hand to look as if they might be boxes of some kind. Something there. Right, move on. Our lovely ladies bit more emphasis on the darkness there and a 
few little marks on the clothing. Strap. And any other little accents that you think might add to your painting. It's just got a couple little marks there. Um, right. with this lady. I just want to do something uh, right at the end, uh, show you about how we, uh, th this is very light here, and um, whether whether I want it light or not, we'll see, but uh, um, Okay. I've got a bit of light on that bicycle seat. keen to have mess up the road a little bit. Now it may well be that I'll leave this go away and have a drink and come back and see if I want to do anything more and do that and then I'll send it in. But the one thing, two things I want to show you. Uh, first of all, our, um, let's make one or two bits darker here. Uh, first of all is this area here. If you wanted to change that, if you wanted just to have, a, have it a different color, let me just show you something. So you wanted it to be something other than the white. Um, and similarly, you also wanted the ladies' hats to have a little bit of um, uh, sunshine in them that we, we've lost out with. Uh, what I'm going to do is two things. Do this, and then I'll put some white on it, and then we're finished. It's abandoned. It's So I, I just having painted all of this here and with everything dry, I just want to change the emphasis a little bit. So there's something a little bit, um, what, what should we say? Uh, let's, let's pick up some yellow ochre and, um, In the photograph, it looks slightly grey, doesn't it? So um, let's do that. Just add a little bit of a bit of that, maybe something grey, and and if you sweep, go ahead and sweep your brush over like that. You, you, you've just given it that little change and I'm going to put that on their hats just to just to change it and that that's quite useful with watercolor but if you're doing that you, you can do more than I've done by all means but if you are doing that 
uh, don't linger because you'll end up churning the paint up underneath. So I'm going to dry that so it doesn't churn it up. And here I'll use my drinking water. The other water's gone dirty and a little bit of white gouache. And if I want to add little light, highlight accents in of one kind or another, uh, this is a good time to do it. White gouache paint. Um, so there might be one or two little details and I will. Oops, no, it's, it's too wet. And you try and do as little with this as possible. Let me dry my brush and start again. That's why I do it on my hand here. So it's something like that. Uh, right, so we've got little bits of light catching. Uh, of course, these will always work better when they're um, against something dark. Let's see. see, I've already put these in, so I don't think I need to um, uh, by leaving little bits out. So uh, it, it's only if you, you think you need to pop them. I'll, I will pop a couple of bits of highlights in there, um, catching little bits on the bike. A few little spokes. And of course, these are going to work better if you've got um, some some dark shadow behind them, which is one of the reasons why I put, put the shadow behind. And let's just bring in um, something here. This chrome bit of the bicycle wheel, which is catching the light a bit. Um, the bells, the bikes. Uh, anything else? I think the secret is to not overdo this. Uh, in William Turner's day of painting, they used to call this body wash. A body wash. Right, let's a um, couple of these little bits catching the light. I won't do any more. There we are. We got that done in two and three quarter hours, two paintings. So everybody, thank you very much for attending. Here are the two uh, pictures that we, I did and, 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 and we use as the demonstrations for this. The working in a sketchbook, you know, um, uh, albeit that I, I was doing this without being there in front of the subject, but th this was the one I showed you where where I was in Hoi An painting in front of the subject. There's lots more in here as well. Um, and, and of course, the larger painting that we've got here. 